Um, with me tonight is Jennifer Allison, uh, Metro's Board Corporate Secretary, and Lasmian Dumi, uh, Project Manager at Metro's Office of Real Estate and Development, who will be giving tonight's presentation. But yet, uh, on the next two slides, we'll cover the previous changes to the transit facilities, especially covering outspend and access, and as well as provide a summary of key points for our environmental evaluation. At the Capital Heights Metro Station, the proposed changes include closing the surface parking ride lot and then using the 327 parking ride sources following mass traffic plan without replacement. Metro would also propose a looking figure on the existing bus slope and the just ride lot. This route configuration will create parcels or land area available for residential and dual commercial development. The configuration will better integrate the metro station into the fabric of the surrounding community. We will offer an old customer service experience at the metro station entrance. It will enhance safety for bus operations by Swiss and bus trains. The existing surface lot will be removed and reconstructed in the same vicinity, but as a curbside facility on the new street created to support the bus operations. The entry will be from Davie Street, as it does today, but the exit will now be on onto Maryland 214 or East Capitol Street. The traffic will flow in a one-way northbound direction, opposite to the flow of buses. Regarding capacity, the proposal is to reduce the capacity to eight spaces, which aligns with pickup and drop-off demand patterns and includes some additional capacity to accommodate future growth in households in the station's park shed that may result in increased pickup and drop-off demand. The supporting data and analysis are included in the environmental evaluation report posted on Metro's website. In this evaluation, it was identified that there were few paid parking transactions using the park mobile system and that the unpaid parking activity in the Kiss and Ride lot occurred for extended periods of time, often exceeding two hours or to more than 12 hours in duration, including some overnight parking. With the proposed reduction in Kiss and Ride capacity, those customers seeking daily or longer term parking options will be directed to use Addison Road Metro Station, which is the next station along the Boone Silver Line, or on street or off street parking options that may also be created after development of the site. Finally, as part of the compact public hearing, staff has prepared an environmental evaluation for the, pro for the project to assess any potential impacts and to identify opportunities to minimize or mitigate them. This analysis identifies whether there are impacts to transportation, stormwater, open space, air quality, noise, and other community or environmental features that dire directly result from Metro's proposed changes to the transit facilities only. In this case, the reconfiguration of the bus loop, reduction and relocation of kiss and ride spaces, and the elimination of the park and ride facility. This is not to do with the anticipated future development of the site. Prince George's County will lead that evaluation process of the future development of the site when the future selected developer submits appli uh, an application for review by the county's entitlements and buildings approval process. Regarding transportation, it is anticipated that the reconfiguration of the bus facilities will improve safety by eliminating the awkward left turn movements uh, onto oncoming traffic, which may also reduce traffic congestion. The elimination of the park and ride facility and reducing the kiss and ride capacity will result in less traffic around the station. During construction, an interim operations plan, sometimes called a maintenance of traffic plan or MOT plan, will be established to ensure access for all travel modes to the Capitol Heights Metro Station is always provided throughout the project. Then, regarding air quality, noise, and stormwater, there are also no permanent impacts anticipated as a result of the transit facility changes. However, there may be some minor temporary impacts during construction of the tilt, like dust, equipment noise, or sediment and erosion. These will be mitigated following typical construction mitigation techniques and will follow Prince George's County's requirements for construction operations. This concludes my present Andrew to go over the procedures for tonight's hearing. Thank you, uh, Ms. Dumey. Um, 
Again, briefly, I will cover the procedures that we will follow uh, during the, uh, sorry, um, you can start by making your way towards the podium once your name is called. However, if you need a microphone brought to you, please wave your hand when your name is called so we can see you and we'll bring one to you. For those of you who have pre-registered to join via Teams, we ask that you remain muted on your camera with your camera off until you're called on to speak. Once you've given your testimony, you can log off Teams and watch the rest of the hearing on YouTube. For those of you participating via telephone, pre please press star five if you want to provide comments. When it's your turn to speak, we'll announce the last four digits of your phone number. Until you are called on, please mute yourself by pressing star six. When it's your turn to speak, you can press star six again to unmute. Again, elected officials are uh, provided five minutes to provide comments and everyone else, we'd ask that you keep your remarks to three minutes. Uh, extra time will be given for translation uh, if needed. We have a timer that will count down how much time you have left to uh, speak. It will give you a warning beep when you have 20 seconds left and uh, will beep continuously when your time is up. They do it to me at the board uh, meetings as well, so don't feel like you're alone there. Uh, the timer is important because we want to make sure everyone has equal time to provide their comments. Uh, and then uh, we ask that you stay within your allotted time to ensure that we can hear from everyone who wants to provide testimony. Uh, in addition to the opportunity to speak at this evening's hearing, Metro also welcomes further comment on the proposed changes. There are two ways to provide comments, online and by mail. Comments must be provided by 9 a.m. on Monday, November 20th, 2023. Online, uh, online comments can be submitted through the Capitol Heights Project page, which can be found at wmata.com forward slash plans and projects. Once there, you may type comments and upload letters or other documents. You can mail comments to Office of the Secretary, SECT2E, WMATA, Post Office Box 44390, Washington, D.C., 20026-4390. Please reference Capitol Heights Public Hearing in the subject line. Comments must be received, not postmarked, by November 20th. 2023 in order to be included in the hearing record. Your comments will become part of the public record that will be reviewed by my colleagues uh, at the Board of Directors. Changes to what was presented here tonight may be proposed in response to testimony received and subsequ subsequent staff analysis that is done. Uh, I will note that this public hearing process is unable to address any comments outside of the scope of this docket. Those include comments on size, mix, or design of buildings, or future joint development projects, land use matters, service complaints, and fares. Please note that profanity will not be tolerated during this public meeting. For those of you participating online, I would ask that you mute yourself and turn your camera off when you're not speaking. And for those providing testimony that may be watching the hearing on another device, please make sure that the device is muted when you. I want to take a moment to recognize that this is where we get to listen to you, right? This is the intended objective. We are through our, our steps, uh, and this is your opportunity to provide comments on the proposal, and we are here to listen. So we won't be able to answer questions during your testimony. Before you begin your remarks, please state your name, uh, and if you're here with an organization, uh, the organization that you represent, if any. Please note that all statements, including any personal information, such as name, email address, address, the telephone number you provide in the statement are releasable to the public upon request and you may be posted and may be posted on Metro's website without change, including in any personal information provided. Uh, the public comment period opened on October 7th and will close on November 20th, uh, uh, 2023. Uh, staff anticipates releasing the draft staff report to the Metro website in the winter. Uh, once the staff report is released to the public, those of you who provided comments will have the opportunity to review the report to ensure that we captured your comments accurately. That review and comment period will close two weeks after the draft staff report is posted. Staff anticipates that the final staff report will be submitted to the Board of Directors for acceptance in spring 2024. We're almost there. Uh, now that we have all the background out of the way, 
it's time to call our first witness. Uh, we'll begin with those on Teams tonight and then go through those joining in person and via phone until everyone who wants to provide testimony has had the opportunity. I guess we're going to switch it up. We're going to go in person to start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, Matthew Exline. Thank you. Test, test. There we go. All right. My name is Matthew Eckstein. I'm here as a private citizen. Uh, I am opposed to the removal of the parking for a very selfish reason, which is that I use it every day as a commuter. Um, if the parking lot goes away, uh, as you mentioned, the impact on me is that I will go up the road to Addison, Height, or Addison Road and park there. Um, I heard you mention that uh, you think that the time impact will be less than five minutes. I haven't tried it myself, so I don't know. To be honest, respectfully, I'm a little skeptical of that. I have a feeling in the real world it's going to take add a little bit more extra time than that because it's not just riding one more metro stop. It's also the design of the parking facilities there. At, um, uh, here at uh, the Capitol Heights station, uh, the surface lot is very compact. It's very convenient. It's very quick and easy to get in and out. At Addison Road, it's a parking garage, uh, and there's a longer walk time. So, uh, and then you multiply that out um, times two times a day, times five days a week. Uh, if it's, say, adds an extra five to 10 minutes each direction, that's 10 to 20 minutes a day times five days a week is an hour a week, four hours a month, and so on. It adds up. Um, now, I am not opposed to uh, the development. I am opposed to getting rid of the parking. So if there is a way to have development with and still have some parking, uh, then that's fine. If the developers uh, still allow some parking uh, but are charging a lot more for it. Uh, for me, that's equivalent to the parking going away because uh, the 495 that's charged now is about as much as I'm willing or able to pay. So if a developer said, we'll have some spaces, uh, we've only got 20 spaces, so we're going to charge $20 a day for it, that's not going to work. Uh, and I, uh, you made the point that the current parking lot is arguably underutilized. Uh, and that kind of makes sense. Um, if you look at it the other way, though, that's still about 125 people a day who are currently parking there because they think that's their best option. And if it goes away, then they're going to have to find something else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to call Elizabeth Hawkins. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Hawkins. I have been living in Capitol Heights for almost 35 years. I am opposed to removing the parking lot. I, too, use that parking lot a lot. I find that it's safer to use. I would be opposed to parking on the street or someplace else like that. I find it very convenient and safer. I moved to Capitol Heights specifically because of that park that um, uh, because of Capitol Heights uh, station, it's an underground station. The, par the parking is close to make me go to Addison Road. It's an outdoor, out in the elements. I don't prefer it. So um, my my uh, opposing is the going away of the parking lot. I also oppose whatever uh, development that they're looking at to, to put on that lot. I always th already think that uh, Capitol Heights is over getting overdeveloped as it is. I mean, on my street alone, they've cut into the forest, uh, created more housing. The deer have nowhere to go but in my backyard to eat. It's, it's getting a bit too much, so I really would like um, 
parking lot to stay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is um, Chad Carreras. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Chad Carreras. I'm a local resident here representing myself. I just quickly typed up what I wanted to say. Uh, so I reviewed the information on the site and realized that the intent is to attract development at the site on the website, um, but I have concerns about the lack of construction feasibility relating to the proximity of the Metro easement as well as the impact to operations. I'd like to request that the solicitation requirements are added for potential developers to provide technical details pertaining to the construction impacts on operations as an evaluation for selection and criteria, and the proposals requiring interim, and if there's a proposal requiring interim busing or service, interim busing will be disqualified. It's my understanding that the Ramada easement and potential limits of disturbance will pose significant geotechnical limitations that may adversely reduce metro operations. Also, I request that the proposals and future and further studies speak to the circulation and safety of how the interim bus and kiss and ride will function safely for riders and pedestrians. And lastly, request that the additional studies analyze changes to signalization and their impact on safety and traffic flows within adjacent intersections and the arterial road. Overall, the idea sounds promising, but I think that the changes to the parking lot would be an effective use of space, but I have safety concerns about the additional loss of the kiss and ride. Unfortunately, the proposal lacks, uh, looks very aggressive, and the planning study lacking critical detail about the impacts to construction and the built environment will have on ridership, or on riders, and the adjacent stakeholders for the community to provide any meaningful feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'll call up uh, David Zinn. And on behalf of MDOT, and to emphasize the Moore administration's commitment to supporting WMATA's joint development efforts. <clears throat> we see transit-oriented development as a key activity to increase transit accessibility and economic development in the state of Maryland. Furthermore, we are strongly supportive of the broader vision of the Blue Line Corridor efforts being led by Prince George's County. MDOT is actively partnering with WMATA and Prince George's County on achieving the Blue Line Corridor vision of bringing active transit-oriented development and amenity-filled development to this stretch of Maryland 214, including here at Capitol Heights. As a funding partner to WMATA's joint development program, MDOT is working with WMATA to evaluate the proposed changes to the bus operation at Capitol Heights. The proposed reconfiguration will impact East Capitol Street and Maryland State Highway. We recognize that reconfiguring Metro bus ingress and egress into the site is needed to set the stage for feasible developer parcels at the Capitol Heights Metro. We appreciate the ongoing work with WMATA, the State Highway Administration, the District Department of Transportation, and others in studying this reconfiguration. MDOT is confident that an, an, appro an appropriate solution can be developed to support joint development while managing the interplay of station, bus, and pickup drop-off traffic with adjacent roadways. We're continuing to engage with WMATA through an ongoing traffic study as part of the planning process to address these policy issues. MDOT looks forward to the advancement of this joint development opportunity, and we will work with WMATA and our regional partners as WMATA works towards a solicitation for a developer partner to advance the Capital Heights Joint Development Vision in 2024. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next up, uh, I will call Stephen Sturdivant. Good evening. I'm Stephen Sturdivant. I've been a, a resident of Capital Heights since 2012, and I'm opposed to the, um, the proposal here tonight. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that I haven't heard anything about a potential backup site proposed, if there has been a uh, backup site proposed or talked about. Um, also, I noticed that the, um, as a long-time resident, the parking lot capacity has been reduced uh, since COVID. Uh, but i also like to know, as Ramada, Ramada studies on uh, the other uh, parking lots within the metro, that have uh, reduced capacity as well. I'm sure that Capitol Heights is not the only one, but I think that's a, um, a situation that uh, Ramada has to work out amongst themselves. But again, I am opposed to the, uh, to the redevelopment. And again, I, again, I haven't heard or has anyone talked about any backup sites proposed. 
uh, for this um, development. Thank you. Uh, next, I'll call up Kyle. Um, tough one here. Reader, did I get that right? Definitely. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Kyle Reeder. I am a resident of unincorporated Capitol Heights right across the street from the uh, Addison uh, Capitol Heights Metro Station. I use it every day to get to work down in Foggy Bottom. Um, for the record, I'm strongly in support of this. Uh, my walk to and from work, although it's like five, seven minutes, is a dangerous walk crossing over Maryland 214, six lanes of highway with no lights or crosswalks. The bus bay um, is really unsafe in that the bus is getting to, or getting from the station onto Southern Avenue, onto like East Capitol, is really dangerous. A lot of cars are speeding, the buses are big and trying to navigate this like narrow intersection. And so I, I believe moving the bus, uh, the bus lane to kind of a more centralized um, place is, uh, good for the, the pedestrians, it's good for the buses, it's good for the drivers. I'm also excited about um, how you guys are better utilizing the space. I know it's kind of awkwardly designed, not necessarily like a, a perfect rectangle, right? And so as we are trying to promote uh, more transit-oriented development and get more people riding Metro and getting more people into the town, uh, and I mean, I imagine building two buildings instead of one would produce a lot more housing, which I'm excited about. Um, and invite more residents into the community and potentially more amenities, including grocery stores that folks look for. Um, and then I'll just uh, end by just saying congratulations to Prince George's County WMATA on the FBI being selected for uh, Greenbelt. That, that is gonna transform the Greenbelt Metro Station. And, I'm, and I, I, I believe that this project, this reconfiguration of the blue line of Capitol Heights is our own version of that in itself to transform our Capitol Heights community. So I'll end with that. Thank you. Thank you. It was an exciting evening. Uh, more ways than one. That is it uh, for in-person comments. Okay. Is there anyone else in the room? Yes. Can Good you afternoon. State your name, please. Um, my name is Cal uh, Councilwoman Anita Anderson with the Town of Capitol Heights. Thank you. I would like to say that I, I'm not in agreement with taking the parking lot away. One, because it is open. I don't use it on a regular basis, but when I have used it, I felt more comfortable using that as opposed to going to the Addison Road, which is inside. It's easier to be lugged up there at that station, um, and there has been lack of police presence or metro police security up at the Addison Road. So I feel that we should keep it. Also, I know the young lady in her presentation, she gave um, statistics as to the numbers being reduced. Of course, the numbers were reduced, in the parking of all parking lots due to COVID. Um, next year is Shania, so the, our presidential election and the House and Senate will be changing, which means that the likelihood of the amount of people teleworking will decrease. We will be going back into the office because that's where they are pushing, which means we will be going back to those parking lots. If you take that away, which at one point when before the COVID, Capitol Heights subway station parking lot was full. I remember many days having to rush down there. I knew I had to be there by before seven if I wanted a parking space or a decent parking space for that matter. So taking that away from the people I think will hurt the town and hurt any other people that were parking there um, because we're gonna need it. Also, I just hope you all, either if you take it away, which you've considered more security at Addison Road, more lights up there when the time changes or when it's dark, as well as if we keep Capitol Heights outdoors parking, you, all, you again put more security because we do have an increase of these carjackings and cars being broken into. And I yell. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else in the room that uh, hasn't spoken that would like to provide remarks? All right, thank you. Um, as a reminder, we'll be accepting, oh, sorry. Uh, is there anyone else on the phone who wishes to provide t testimony tonight? If so, please press star five to be put in the speaker's queue. Okay. Uh, as a result, uh, nobody is uh, on the phone looking to provide testimony, uh, and uh, this hearing is going to be now concluded. Uh, as a reminder, we'll be accepting written testimony until 9 a.m. on Monday, November 20th, 2023. Testimony can be submitted online at wmata.com forward slash plans and projects, all one word. Then navigate to the Capitol Heights project page. Testimony can also be sent via U.S. mail to the Office of the Secretary, WMATA, S-E-C-T, 2-E, P.O. Box, 44390, Washington, D.C., 20026-4390. All mailed testimony must be received by 9 a.m. on Monday, November 20th, 2023. As a reminder, a video recording of this hearing will be posted on YouTube at youtube.com backslash Metro Forward. If you'd like to view it to help with developing written testimony, which again must be received by Metro by 9 a.m. on Monday, November 20th. All right. Thanks for holding with us. Uh, Five zero nine nine. If you can please state your name uh, and uh, provide your your remarks. The parking or the area will be greatly increased by no parking at the station. Um, and I think that this is a misguided decision on behalf of Ramonta. I'm not opposed to the development, but I am definitely, vehemently opposed to no parking being available at that station. We already have overflow folks parking on East Capitol. The next one will be in 50A, 50 and further down. We have the schools interfering with um, our transportation. So that's all that I have to say for the record. Thank you, ma'am. We missed your name if you could state that for us. I'm sorry, say that again? We, we missed your name. Uh, if you could state that for us. Okay. Sure. It's Anita, A N I T A, Marsh, M as in Mary, A as in H as in Harry. Thank you so much, Miss Marsh. With that, got it. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> With that, uh, I will say thank you to everybody here in the room, uh, on the phone, and on the teams uh, for participating in this evening's hearing, uh, and we will go ahead and conclude. I wish everybody uh, a good evening and, and hope everybody has a, a safe travel home. Thank you.